New reporting reveals the extent to which Donald Trump is willing to go full authoritarian if he wins the 2024 election. The Washington Post released a piece titled Trump and his allies plot revenge, Justice Department control in a second term, and it reveals some chilling information about Trump's plans if he becomes president in 2025 after the 2024 election. Before diving into that, let me remind you of something Trump has been saying lately at rallies. Take a look. Democrat charging his opponent. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. That means that if I win and somebody wants to run against me, I call my attorney general. I say, listen, indict him. Well, he hasn't done anything wrong that we know. Of. I don't know. Indict him on income tax evasion. You'll figure it out. So that's a clip we've looked at a few times. And when other Republicans are asked about it, they brush it off. Like Nancy Mace, for example, saying, oh, I don't know if he's kidding or not when he says that. Well, now we've received further confirmation as if we needed it, that indeed he's not kidding when he says that. While he wrongly accuses Biden of politically persecuting him, something there's just not evidence to substantiate, he's actually the one crafting the plan to politically persecute his enemies. Here's some of this from the Washington Post. Donald Trump and his allies have begun mapping out specific plans for using the federal government to punish critics and opponents should he win a second term, with the former president naming individuals he wants to investigate or prosecute and his associates drafting plans to potentially invoke the Insurrection Act on his first day in office to allow him to deploy the military against civil demonstrations. So what's being discussed there is authoritarianism 101, making a plan for how Trump can weaponize the federal government to target his critics and then planning to invoke the Insurrection Act on day one to respond to civil demonstrations during his inauguration. A chilling tactic, showing America what they're willing to do and what we're in for and warning us about future civil disobedience and how the Trump administration will respond to it. Here's more. In private, Trump has told advisors and friends in recent months that he wants the Justice Department to investigate one-time officials and allies who have become critical of his time in office, including his former chief of staff, John F. Kelly, and former Attorney General William P. Barr, as well as his ex-attorney Ty Cobb and former Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Mark A. Milley, according to people who have talked to him, who, like others, spoke on the condition of anonymity to describe private conversations. Trump has also talked of prosecuting officials at the FBI and Justice Department, a person familiar with the matter said. In the article goes on to talk about how he would of course try to go after the biden family and in a general sense his presidency would be one of revenge retribution is the word he's been using at rallies and the washington post obtained communications that outline this some of it having to do with the think tank project 25 that's helping to craft these plans even mocking up executive orders this is the real deal this isn't trump just ranting to friends actual plans are being put together and here was one of the authors of the article expanding on this on MSNBC. Uh, tell us what else the former president plans to do if he wins re-election. Well, simply put, he wants revenge. He wants to use the power of the federal government to punish his critics. And what's the crime that they committed? It's the crime of criticizing Donald Trump. Uh, and But the big takeaway from our reporting is not just that he is saying this, it's that the people who are around him who are angling for a job in his second term are starting to come up with detailed implementation plans to actually do that. So that means that they will be staffing the White House with people who will carry out those orders and that they will be eliminating the traditional insulation between the White House and the Justice Department to clear the way for Trump and his aides to be directly involved in criminal prosecutions. So as was pointed out, the extremely frightening part of all of this is not just that these things are being discussed by Donald Trump, but actual plans are being put together to make it happen. And Trump is filtering for people to surround himself with who are fully on board with participating in these sorts of actions. This is something we've talked a lot about, but as we think about Trump's attempts to overturn the 2020 election results, one of the really scary things about it is that it was a learning experience for him. He learned that if he wants to successfully implement his worst impulses, he'll have to surround himself with people who will say yes to everything. There won't be a Mike Pence, a Bill Barr, etc. to say, ah, that's a little bit too far for me. 
And so before he's even in the White House, if he's going to get there, hopefully he won't. But before that time, he's discussing these plans and then selecting for people who express their willingness to enact them. And to the point about Trump learning from his failed anti-democratic overthrowing of the last election, here was a clip we looked at previously that's very applicable to this of former Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger making this very point. Do you, do you still consider yourself a Republican? So it's a, it's a tough question. I do only in that because I don't want to give up on that fight. I mean, this country needs two healthy parties, yeah. a healthy Democratic Party and a healthy Republican. So I'm not going to give up that title. A country needs a good conservative and a good liberal movement at any time in their lives. I, so I, I still have the title, but I voted Democratic last election cycle. If it's Trump against Joe Biden, I'll vote Democratic this coming one. Because Anderson, I really believe it's down to one issue on the ballot. And not taxes, not even abortion, nothing. The one issue is, do you believe in democracy or do you believe in authoritarianism? And I think that's the only thing we should be voting on. Because you see a legitimate sl slide to authoritarianism if Donald Trump is reelected. I see if he's reelected, not a slide, a sprint. Because in January 6th, we saw the guardrails you know, of democracy held. The car hit the rails that kept you on the road. That rail can't take two hits. And now they know what they're doing. Now they know where the tricks are in the system. I guarantee you Donald Trump will not put people around him that are loyal to the Constitution and will push back. He'll put, if you interview 100 people, trust me, you're going to find somebody to be attorney general that simply tells you, I'll do whatever you want, Mr. President. Those guardrails are being ripped out. And that's what I see as, as what would happen, frankly, if he's reelected. And that's exactly right. If back in 2020 and 2021, Trump had so little respect for our democracy and rule of law, that he was willing to try to put together a slate of fraudulent electors to attempt to justify staying president or trying to get Vice President Mike Pence at the time to stop the certification of the election or inciting a mob to stop the certification of the election or pressuring local election officials to just fraudulently find thousands of votes to make him win states that he lost or considering declaring martial law and ordering a new election and seizing voting machines and all these crazy things. If he was willing to do all of that, when he had something to lose because he still had the opportunity to run again, what is he going to do this time when he doesn't have anything to lose? And as Adam Kinzinger said, the guardrails of our institutions can only handle so many wrecks against them. Eventually, they're not going to hold up. And so now on top of his anti-democratic ambitions that we talk about on a daily basis, Trump is planning, some out in the open and some in private, to just set the rule of law up into flames, get rid of the separation between the president and the DOJ so that he can go after his critics. And it has to be pointed out, the tactic that's being used here is just so much projection. Accuse the other side of weaponizing the government against you so that you can actually weaponize it against them. Accuse the other side of politically persecuting you so that you can justify politically persecuting them. And I've said this so many times, but... Trump is being prosecuted because he decided to act in certain ways that prosecutors in multiple different jurisdictions have deemed to be against the law. That's what law and order looks like. No one has brought forward any evidence that this is some scheme to take down Trump. But he is now openly promoting, such as what we watched in the first clip, the idea of just making up charges against his enemies. So just to contextualize this further, he told us he wanted to terminate the Constitution on true social. He showed us how little respect for democracy he has in 2020 and 2021 and since then. And he's now telling us he will persecute his critics. Let's believe him and vote accordingly in 2024. Before you go, don't forget to become a member at lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership to get access to the daily bonus show Monday through Friday. Plus follow me on threads at Luke Beasley Official, Instagram at Luke Beasley Official, X at Luke P. Beasley, and sign up for the Beasley Brief, a daily morning newsletter. It's free. that summarizes the previous day's events by going to lukebeasleyshow.com slash brief, and I'll talk to you next time.